What I want to share this morning is have faith in God. Amen? Have faith in God. You don't have to have faith in the church because sometimes the church will let you down. You don't have to have faith in this person or that person because we will let you down. But I want to tell you there's one who will never, ever let you down. Have faith in God. And uh, so, you know, if we can move into that direction and, and somehow or other embrace ourselves, harness ourselves to, to the kingdom and uh, then watch his outworking in our life. How many people know that God is outworking in your life? God's doing something in your life that you may not be aware of. I know when I got first, got, first got saved, I had a lot of hopelessness and mess around my life. But, uh, you know, remember that old song, all I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, that he made something beautiful out of my life because that's the working of God. That's the outworking of the Spirit of God in your life. I want to say to you today too that there's more for you than against you. There's more for you than against you. You know, if we can indelibly print some things into our mind, because when, you know, the, the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all, right? That's just one little, one little sentence, and it's, but there's so much in there. But you see, when hopelessness comes, that's what the Lord does. The afflictions come, the troubles come, the trials come. And hopelessness can get around our lives. And negativity, failure, defeat, whatever it might be, can, can surround you and consume you. And, you, and, and, and you know, that it just pushes you down. But there's only one thing that can lift you up is what God says. But God says, I will deliver you out of them all. So if, if I can understand that there's more for me than be against me, that whatever it is that's coming against me, there's something greater that will overcome it for me. There's something greater. It's not hopelessness around my life now, but there's more for me than be against me. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. My God is greater, much greater, than whatever is trying to attack my life. So you build strength on that, and that causes you to rise up. It's actually like a ladder or a rope or whatever it might be, that can pull you out of things. Isaiah 55, verse 8 through to 11, this is what it says. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. God, God's word is what we have to lay hold of. It shall not return to him void. It won't go back empty. It will. Everybody say will. It will accomplish what it says. And you can take whatever promise you want out of the Bible, and if you can somehow or other clothe that promise with faith because many times unbelief steals the word out of us. But if you can clothe that word, that promise that God has given, if you can clothe it with faith and confession and belief, you will have whatever God says. And then you'll have whatever you say. It will accomplish and it will prosper. It will bring forth. Today, God broods over His Word to perform it. God is brooding over the Word of, that He sent forth. He, it, it just isn't laying dormant out there. He's brooding over it. He's doing something like the seed that you put into the ground, like, like that thing that you sow. There's something, the soil gets around it, 
and that soil that's there, the, the nutrients, the, the, the moisture, and whatever it is, and it's obviously I don't really know what I'm talking about here, but I know about the Word of God. But that, that seed, that nutrients, and all, whatever is going, it causes that seed to bring forth. And it doesn't just bring forth a seed, it brings forth a plant, and it brings forth a flower or, or something like that, or a fruit. And in that flower and in that fruit are other seeds, multitudes and multitudes and multitudes. And, and that's what we've got to do somewhere or other, is, is allow the Word of God that God has put inside of us to develop and grow and mature. And, and I want to tell you that there are just multitudes and multitudes of things that God wants to do for you. God broods over His Word to perform it. All that God spoke will come to pass. He will have a church without spot or wrinkle. Do you believe that? He will have a people of power. He will have a people who will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He will have a people there that know Him, know the power of His resurrection. He will have a people there that will cast out devils in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe that today? All that was spoken will come to pass. It will take courage for the church to take its place. It will take courage for us to rise above, out of, and into. I want to just read you some scriptures that you only know so very, very well. It's found in the book of Joshua chapter 1. And this is the promise or the word of God that God spoke to Joshua. The Word of God, this book, God is speaking to you and me as individuals. It's not just there for the hierarchy. It's not just there for the, for the prophets or the evangelists or the pastors or the teachers or, or the apostles. It's for every, every person. This Bible, this book is for every person. And God has given us precious, precious promises. And God spoke to Joshua and he said this, he said, because when it first started, it said, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, and there was a death and there was mourning and there was hopelessness that was mostly, obviously, getting around Joshua's life. So God comes and speaks a word to him. And he says in verse 5, he says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Then he goes on and he says this. It says, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong. If we read it all the way through there, Joshua, you see, God gave him a promise, but to be able to grab hold of that promise, Sometimes, can I say it like this, and I don't want you to misunderstand. The Word of God is powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. But I've heard a lot of people quote the Bible, speak the Bible, and they wouldn't have enough power of God in them to blow the fuzz off a peanut. Because they're words. There's words. You've got to have the rhema. You've got to have the anointed. You've got to have the, the, the life word. There's something there. And you see, for Joshua to be able to do what God said he was going to do with him, no man shall be able to stand before you. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. He was going to ask him to do some very, very powerful things. But he said, listen to this, Joshua. Listen to this, whoever you are. You've got to, to be able to do what I've asked you to do. You've got to be very, very strong. And you've got to be very, very courageous. You've got to, you've got to be able to, to, to trust no matter what's going on, no matter what storm is in your midst. You've got to believe that I am and that I am a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. You've got to know that my word will not return to me void. If I said no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, Joshua, Hell would have to freeze over before that wouldn't happen. Whatever I've said is going to come to pass. I'm watching over what I'm saying. I'm watching over these words. But you have to be 
very, very courageous. You see, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the master of fear. We, we, we can't let fear grip our hearts. We can't let fear get around our lives. We can't let things stop us from becoming what God wants us to do. I believe that we need a fresh revelation of the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit or the anointing. Something that's been void in the church. Something that's, that's taken second place. It's now the eloquence and the professionalism of the structure and the way it's all done and the magnitude and the smoke and the... And the he knows what I'm talking about. And so we don't need all that anymore. We, we, can, we can help people now and show people because of how great we are. Friend, I want to tell you, we need the anointing. We need the Holy Ghost. We have to know and have faith in the anointing and God's ability to perform it. We've got to have faith in the Word of God and God's ability to bring it to pass. You see... The anointing, you, when, when the anointing comes and if, if you're being prayed for and the presence of God starts getting around your life, you're in worship and you're, and you're starting to lift your hands and, and all of a sudden the, the power of God starts to come all over you. The presence of God gets around your life. The anointing will clothe you. The anointing will clothe you. It will clothe you with power from on high. It will change a weak, broken person into a giant killer. It will change hopelessness, negativity, failure and defeat. It will smash it. It will clothe you with power. You see, that's... that's we. How, how do you explain... Thing that that is felt more than you can tell it. How can you explain an experience that's that's not natural? How can you explain something that when a broken negative person when they enter into that and touch something that they're clothed. Something comes down around their life and changes that broken person into, into something dynamic and something powerful. That God gets all the glory. Do you believe that today? The anointing will clothe you with power from on high. I, I, want, I want you to get so hungry today for, for, for the anointing I've had enough of religion. I've had enough of hype. I've had enough of those sort of things. I want reality, amen. We've got to be real today. We've got to be real. 1 Samuel 16, verse 13, this is what it says. It says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, David, in the midst of his brethren. And it says, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. Let me read it again. Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. See, modern church today and modern thinking is people come out for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, there's so many people today that you talk to them about the Holy Spirit and they say, yes, yes, yes. Uh, 25 years ago, I went out the front and, and I began to speak in other tongues. God touched me. What, what about now? Oh, no, no, no. Well, I had the experience. <laughs> you see, the Holy Spirit is not just an experience. It's not just, an, it's not just a once -er. It's not just a hallelujah shakabundi. It's from 
that day forward. <laughs> it never left him, amen. It wasn't just a one-day experience. It wasn't just a once and, and, that, and that was all over. And 1 Samuel 16, verse 18, as that which Samuel did to young David as he poured that oil upon him, as the anointing came upon him, as God came upon him, it says, in 18, it says, Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and comely person, and the Lord is with him. I read all those verses, all those lines there to get to the last line, the Lord is with him. Amen. You see, that's the difference. The Lord is with him. The Lord is with him. David's greatest strength was that the Lord is with him. Your greatest strength is that the Lord is with you. And you know, if we can somehow or other get our mind renewed to know that it doesn't matter what I've done, where I've been and anything else, that the Lord is with me because He has anointed me. Amen. He has anointed you. He has put His seal upon your life. He has touched you. You have to, you have to believe. You have to believe. And, and believing takes courage. The enemy will keep telling you, no, you're not good enough, or blah, 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 you'll never make it. I had a young man say to me today, he wants to become a pastor. Well, friend, I want to tell you, there's nothing in the world that can stop him. Only his belief system. If the enemy can get in there and tell him he'll never make it, he's not good enough. <laughs> but if he can grab a hold and know, he's got to understand, you have to know and believe that the same anointing rests upon us. That same anointing that was on David is now on you. The same spirit that rested upon David to slay the Goliath rests on you. You've got to believe that. You've got to get your mind in your, 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 that system. The same spirit that rested upon Jesus rests upon me. It rests upon you. You might... As I'm saying these words, you might say, oh, yeah, that's okay for you to say, but you don't know about it. I don't care. The, same, the Word of God says it. Not what Neil says, it's what the Word of God says. It rests upon you. Do you believe that today? The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead rests upon you today. That's the same Spirit. The same Spirit will raise the church from the dead again. The same Spirit will cause the church to rise out of the ashes, amen. The same Spirit will cause us to rise again. Arise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. See, we, we've got to push through the, the, the negative thinking. I want to just read to you scriptures, that, some of the most beautiful scriptures in the book, I believe, that, that it can encourage us and, and, and help us to, to smash every lie that the enemy would bring around our lives. And this is Jesus. Jesus told the devil, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall not uh, live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan. God broods over his word. <laughs> he watches over it to perform it. Whatever he says in the book is ours. Amen. Satan came to try to deceive Jesus. And he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. If we can learn to live by the word and not by feelings, 90% of people live by feelings. They live by past hurts, past disappointments. You ask them to do something, oh no, I tried that once and it failed. Well, that, that's life. You've just got to keep pushing through. You've just got to keep uh, believing God. You've just got to do what God tells you to do. After all that, Jesus returned, it says in verse 14, in the power of the Spirit. And then it's in, in verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit 
and with fire who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Do you believe God is with you? Do you believe God is with you? Well, if God is with you, that makes you an overcomer. You automatically. But if we believe a lie, the lie will over, override what God says. You've got to believe either the lie or you believe the truth. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. What do you believe? What do you believe? But you've got to be very, very courageous. You've got to make sure. Fear. You're the master of it. I will not allow it to rule me. I will not allow it. And he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of the sight to the blind, that are set at liberty those who are oppressed. Proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Friend, I ought to tell you, that's something that we need to do every day. We need to stand up in our room or wherever it is that you pray and believe God, and instead of sometimes praying stupid Faithless prayers. Give God a shock. Lift up your hands, throw your hands in the air and say, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Hallelujah. God, you have anointed me. Hallelujah. And this day is the day. And I'm going to go forward in your name. And if there's any sick among them, I'm going to lay hands on them. Hallelujah. And they will recover. Glory to God. Demons will come out in Jesus' name. You've got to give a little. <laughs> You've got to smile. You've got to believe a lot. You've got to trust in, in what God says and, and not in your own thinking. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God, you have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That is to every believer, amen. Because Jesus said in the book, John 12, 14, 12, or 12, 14, 1, 2, it says, These things that I do, you shall do also. And then it goes on to say, And even greater things than this shall you do. So now the church argues about what is the greatest thing. I don't care. Just go out there and heal the sick, cast out devils, and do what God says in the first bit. Worry about the greater things after. Amen? I don't know what it means either, but anyhow, that's one of the questions we'll ask him when we get up there. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. The Spirit of God, the anointing, is not only upon us, but when we're baptized into it and clothed with the absolute power and presence of God himself. See, if you start talking to yourself like this, it, it causes you to, your shoulders to straighten out a little bit. It causes you to, to, you know, to, to stand a little bit stronger. You start to believe that, that this is God's plan. This is not Neil. This is not Global Connections. This is not AOG, DOG, or COD, or whatever else it is. It's got to be God, amen. What God says is it's what God speaks and, and, and understands. God will raise People up out of the ashes. Brokenness, despair. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God will anoint us. He'll clothe us with the abs absolute, absolute power and presence of God Himself. Acts 1 8 says, You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Doesn't see, say you will receive religion. Doesn't say you receive tongues. Tongues is, a, is, is obviously an evidence, and I love speaking in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you speak mysteries under God. You edify yourself. You, you charge yourself. Amen. I don't know about your batteries, but did you charge your battery this morning? John G. Lake wrote these words Sin, sickness, death are under his feet. Hell itself. Taken captive. Every enemy of mankind throttled. 
I, I read that and I just about jumped out of the seat. I thought, that is the word for today. The word for today that the enemy and all of his plans are throttled. Everybody say throttled. Throttled. <laughs> That's a good word. That is a good word. Throttled. Every enemy of mankind throttled, bound, chained by the Son of God. Mankind joined to Jesus by the Holy Ghost is living in triumph. When I, this is what he said. When I received the Spirit of Jesus Christ, I received the Spirit of victory. I received the, that was a good phone ring. Let me just go back. Mankind joined to Jesus by the Holy Ghost in living triumph. When I received the Spirit of Jesus Christ, I received the same Spirit of I, I sorry, I received the spirit of victory and power and might and dominion of grace, of love. All this is given by the imparting of the Holy Spirit. You see, you are so powerful, so powerful, an enemy has come in and lied. And the church is so full of fear that courage is gone. Have you heard the story of the frog that was sitting on a lily pad? And he was sitting there with all his glory. And he was happy. The next minute a snake comes past and looks at him and says, Hello. He said, Hello. And the snake said, who are you? He said, I'm a large mouth dog. There's a lot of large mouth Christians in there. <laughs> and the snake looked at the frog and said, I eat large mouth frogs. And he said, you don't treat me. You don't say so. <laughs> All of a sudden, he was no longer a large mouth frog, but he was a little small mouth frog. <laughs> See, a lot of Christians, we can huff and puff and shout and jump, but when the rubber hits the road, we're just like the large mouth frog. Ah, oh, I'm a born-again, spirit-filled believer. Oh, praise the Lord. I've got something on the road here that they've that they're, uh, got full of demons and they need to be delivered and they got this and they got that. And oh, you don't say so. <laughs> see, see, see. Courage is the master of fear. I, I've been in meetings and you're, you're there and you're excited and hallelujah, there's somebody here and, and you know, you, you've got this and uh, you got a problem with your right eye. Next one they bring out this blind person. <laughs> I, I'm being honest, you know, you want to run. <laughs> And this guy one day came out limping, and I thought, oh, this is, gonna, this is easy. So I, I prayed for him, and got slain in the spirit, and I jumped down and grabbed all of his leg, and I said, be loose! And I grabbed it, had a wooden leg. <laughs> he told me later on that it, 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 it sprouted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 
See, we, we deny who we really are. We're the church triumphant, amen. We're the church victorious. We're ruling and reigning with Christ. That's who we are. That's what we're supposed to be. But, you know, if we, if we just, you know, fear gets around us and negativity gets around us and goodness knows what gets around us and we stop. See, what a privilege, really, we, we have to be quickened together with Christ. We are, we are one spirit with the, with the eternal King. One spirit. This is a power that, that the giants of life cannot conquer. Um, Joel, what's John Austin? John Austin. That's Joel's dad. He was a, he was a mighty man of God. And, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he said that he knew who he was and, you know, he spoke it boldly and he spoke it with authority and, and, and he likened it to, to demons, you know, going up and down the street, uh, hitting people and going into houses and goodness knows what else. But he said, he said when they come past my house, <laughs> the demons say, don't go in there. <laughs> Don't go in. See, see that. I, I want that around my life. Amen. Don't touch him. He'll whip you. Don't, don't. But you know. But if you're a pushover, oh, go in there. They, 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 he'll, he'll cop what you're going to give him. They tell you you're no good. You just stand up and slap him up the side of the head and say, "I've never heard so much junk in all my life." I am a child of a king. I am more than a conqueror. I, I have. Oh, <laughs> The devil goes around seeking whom he may devour. Goes around looking for people that don't know who they are. We're clothed with the awesome power of God himself. You know, when Jesus was born, or before that, when, when, when the Spirit of God, when the angel came, to Mary and said, highly favored among women. She most probably thought, well, that's nice. Highly favored amongst women. Then, he, then she said, you're going to have a child. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> and she could have backed away. She could have, she could have backed away. But she said, how can this be? Seeing I'm a virgin, how can this happen? See, God watches over His Word. He will perform it if we've got the courage and the conviction to believe what God says we can have. What God says about you, you can have. You're going to bring forth a child. He's going to be the Son of God. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And she said, well, okay, but how can this be? And then he said this. He said, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. The Holy Spirit will come all over you, will overshadow you. You see, when, when we got saved, when, when we got, it wasn't just joining a club. Something more dynamic and more powerful than we could ever imagine or think. And there's no man and there's no woman on this planet that can explain to us fully or comprehend I should say that comprehend what happened to your life when you got born again. You got totally transformed by the power of God and the, oh, the Holy Spirit overshadowed you and got all around your life. See, we're, we're not just mistakes in zippers. We're not accidents looking for a place to happen. We are children of the Most High God. Amen. God, I, I, I often think and I try to imagine what, when I got born again, you see, only imagine what happened. Totally transformed. Totally, 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 totally changed. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest Jesus will overshadow you, God Himself. 
This is what will cause a church, an individual to rise from the ashes, to rise above the circumstances and take our place as a warrior, as a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You know, in John 20, verse 21 and 22, Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And, he, and when he had said this, he breathed on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Lord, will you breathe on us again? Lord, will you breathe on us again? Breathe on us. Breathe on us, brethren. Raise us up from the ashes. Raise us up to our destiny, to our purpose. We are children of the Most High God. Father, you have overshadowed us. You've, you've put yourself on the inside of us. We need a fresh outpouring of your Spirit. We need a fresh anointing to come upon us. Fill us again with your Spirit. Fill us again with your power. Fill us again with your mighty anointing, Father. Will you fill us again, Father? Will you, will you come again? Will you come again? Will you come again in your power and in your authority? Will you, will you raise up your church again, Father? Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe on us, my God. I don't know about you, but I want the Spirit of God to breathe on me this morning. I, I, want, I want the breath of life. I, I want God to touch me. I want God to overshadow me. I just don't want to come to church and, and be a church goer. I just don't want to come here today and, and have had sung a few songs and listened to Neil Bash's gums. I, I want to be challenged. I want an encounter. I, I want to be touched by the Spirit of God. I want to go home transformed. I want to go home renewed. I want a fresh Pentecost. There's people in this place today that, that you, you many, many years ago you had a fresh touch. That touch, but the touch is sort of gone. It's, got, it, it's, it's just sort of gone in, into nowhere. But God wants to come again and fill you again. The disciples were, were attacked by the magistrates and, the, and, the, and those ones, and, and they cried out. They said, don't you ever speak in that name again. And they cried out to God, and as they were crying out to God, the Bible says that the place where they were was shaken, and they were filled again with the Holy Spirit, and they rose up with power and authority. If there's ever a day we need a fresh outpouring of the Spirit to hit us. As some of you here that are fresh, you may never, ever have received the mighty Holy Spirit and spoken in other tongues. You may not have the mighty baptism. It may be against your doctrine. It may be against your philosophy. It may be just that you're new and you're young or whatever it might be. But I want to tell you, friends, it is an experience. It is an experience. It is an encounter with an almighty God. And if you have never been filled with the Holy Ghost, believe God today that this is the day that God will fill you with His power. Oh, Father, let's all stand to our feet today. If you're in this house today, can somebody shift this speaker for me? If you're in this house today and you want that touch, you want God to breathe upon you again, you, you say, God, I, I need that fresh touch. I, I need something to, 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 to wake up or whatever it might be that you need. But I, I need it today. I need that touch. I need freshness. I need the Holy Ghost around my life. You've never been filled, get filled today. I'm just going to open this altar this morning for people to come. I want you just to quickly come this morning. Just come and believe God. Don't look at the musicians. Don't look at that. Look to God. Amen. Don't let things distract you. We're so easily distracted. Just come. Just come. Let the Spirit of God get around your life. Let the Spirit of God get around your life. Thank you, Lord.